All right, what's up, guys? My name is Zach, and today I'm going to walk you through my process of filming car reviews. If you've ever wanted to know how I film my car reviews, or if you're interested in filming some of your own, this is how I do it. There are three ways that I've gone about finding cars to review. The first way was asking my friends and family. This was a little bit hard at first, but now pretty much everyone close to me knows what it is that I do. The second way is having people offer their cars to me. This comes with a little bit of time, but I started leaving my email in my videos and a little over a year ago, and it's really, really helped out. The third and hardest way is going to dealerships. I have a sheet of paper describing what it is that I do, my average views per month, and my subscriber count, and I offer free advertising in return for me using their cars to film. I always drive out to the person to make the whole process easier. It's important to me that it is as quick and as painless as possible for the owner since I understand that giving someone the keys to your car is not always the easiest thing to do. When I get there, I usually talk to the owner for a while to learn about the car, the history, strengths and weaknesses of the car, that sort of thing. I then set up my equipment and I go on my way talking about the car. We'll talk about my equipment in a second. I usually talk anywhere from 15 to 25 minutes, and I try to cover as much of the car as I can think of. I save the backseat reviews for the end, so I only have to move the camera once. Once the driving review and backseat reviews are filmed, I start filming the interior and exterior shots of the car you see while I'm talking. This is commonly known as B-roll or secondary footage. Once the driving footage and b-roll is filmed, the car is ready to be returned to the dealer or owner. This whole process of filming takes just under an hour, give or take the traffic. So this is the big one. All of my interior car shots are filmed with a GoPro Hero 5 Black and shot in 4K at 30 frames per second. Attached to the camera is the suction cup used to connect it to the windshield this is an official gopro suction cup but is not the current one i've had the same suction cup since my gopro hero 2 days and it has easily been the most reliable tool i have ever used for filming my other cameras include my phone an iphone 10r and my canon sl3 the phone is only used for one shot, the walk around. It shoots in 4K and has a great field of view as well as built in image stabilization. It has the smoothest shot for walking that far of a distance. The Canon SL3 with a 24mm lens is for everything else engine shots, exteriors, interiors, the lot. I film in 1080p at 60 frames a second. Although the final product doesn't get exported in 60 frames a second, I film in 60, so when I stabilize it later, the program has more frames and thus more information to go off of to give me a smoother shot. I stabilize all my B-roll shots. This also allows me to slow down the shot by 50% to 30 frames a second in case I need the shot to be longer than it already is. For instance, when I talk about a button for 15 seconds, but if I only filmed it for 10, I can slow that clip down to 30 frames a second or by 50%. And there, now I have a 20 second clip of that button and it'll be good for the video. Lastly, for audio, I use a Zoom H2N microphone connected to a Purple Panda lavalier. The H2N is very much worth the money, even as a standalone microphone. I used to use this microphone just suction cupped next to the GoPro on the windshield, um, but there's a couple issues with this. First of all, it's huge, and so it started to almost be a visibility issue, but also, any road noise, um, if the car was lowered or on, you know, stiffer suspension, shakes, rattles, all that stuff was kind of translated through the windshield. And so the lavalier mic kind of gets rid of a lot of that road noise, um, which is really, really nice, especially for really loud cars or lowered cars. Now, this is the part that I'll probably get some crap for. I edit my reviews with iMovie. Yeah, I know, it's the free software that comes on Macs. There's a couple reasons for this. First of all, I've been editing an iMovie for the last 11 years, so it's kind of like the back of my hand at this point. The other reason is that I don't really need anything fancy. I'm comfortable with Final Cut Pro and Premiere, but for what I currently do, iMovie is good enough, and I have it on multiple computers where I only have Premiere and Final Cut on my desktop. So if I'm out and about, if I'm on vacation, if I'm on location, I can't actually really edit with anything better than iMovie, so I might as well just get comfortable with iMovie. I may switch one day, but for now, I'm a ride-or-die iMovie fan. 
editing takes a couple of hours with my max editing of three reviews in one day. I first sync the audio, then I chop up the talking so it flows a lot better and is to the point, then I add the B-roll on top. I export in 4K, watch the final all the way through, and then get it ready for upload. The thumbnail is a very important part of the review. I have a template that I work off of. I import the photo, add the name of the car, and adjust the image so the car pops a little bit, usually by darkening the background as well as blur it. I blur the background to 1.3. Why 1.3? Because 13B rotary engines are 1.3 liters. Yes, I'm that big of a nerd. Every review for the last year has had a background blurred to 1.3 in Adobe Photoshop as an homage to my rotary engine. I am not kidding about this. Once the video is done and the thumbnail is ready, I upload the video to be scheduled. I have a calendar set of when everything is supposed to go up, and this is the calendar for the end of 2019. I started it in August to stay organized, so I didn't actually do this all year. This is sort of a more recent task or idea that I've had. Usually a video will be scheduled to be uploaded around two weeks after it was filmed. I do this so there's a lag, just in case something goes wrong, I get sick, or whatever else, there's no noticeable gap in content. So that's it. That's my process of finding, filming, and finalizing my car reviews. I hope this helped, or at the very least, it was interesting. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything you want to ask me about this process, please leave it in the comment section below, and I'll try my best to answer your guys' questions further. But hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really like to. Take care, guys.